All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, I'm Matthew Moseson. Uh, I've been working on Keepspray as a maintainer for about three years. I'm joined by Antoine Legrand, who is one of the founders of the project Keepspray. Um, uh, this deep dive is really less about us talking at you and more about discussing uh, some of the more in, um, interesting aspects of the Keepspray deployment process and how you can make your deployment better. Um, make it work for your, you know, business needs. Uh, so. so yeah, we're going to try to discuss some topic. Um, before we start, just to introduce a bit uh, the goal of, and principle of the project, if you're not uh, too familiar with. So one of them is uh, to focus on production cluster. So what it means, we try to uh, bring brief, uh, test every component. And also what is important is being able to upgrade from one version to the other all the time. Uh, HA and scalable. And also, we don't package a lot of application, bundle it uh, with it. We try to be more refocusing on the core component. Also, it's to be compensable. We're inclusive to add uh, new, <coughs> new plugins. Say you can have the choice about container runtime, uh, network plugin, and so on. So we try to not, the project itself try to not have opinion about what's best uh, for you to run and different kind of operating system, and so on. On the counterpart, we've been also trying to not be opinionated uh, on, at the beginning about what's best to deploy. So should be Kubedm, Ansible, or should you use container to or binary or system package? But it was like very difficult to maintain all this. And now we try to get like just one way uh, to install the thing. So you have the choice with the component, but not necessarily with the installation path. So that's uh, yeah, part of the project uh, principle. Yeah. Um, and one other thing is, I know a lot of people think, why are we using Ansible with Kubernetes? Um, the answer is, well, Kubedm by itself, it's a great, and we do use it. Um, but you still need to do some things on your system before you can actually run Kubedm in it. Um, you need Docker installed. Um, you need etcd. Well, now there's a native etcd in Kubedm, but maybe it's not ready for prime time. So um, getting these up and running um, with one tool is, is a great uh, value for a lot of people. Um, and since uh, Ansible is all YAML, it's quite readable, quite easy to parse, debug, extend, rewrite, do whatever you want, um, which you don't get in some of the other uh, available tools. OK, so how we structure the, the discussion, we have prepared some topics. But really, what we want is like have your opinion. So we, we choose a few of them, uh, probably a couple. If you have things you want to discuss, also we can add uh, some topics. Yeah, before we talk about these topics, yeah. uh, first I want to ask the audience, who actually has installed Kubespray? That's just everyone. That's, I didn't think it was possible. That's cool. How many of you have a commit in Kubespray? Who are, you, who are contributors? Like 10, that's cool. So uh, you'll have something to share. So besides what's on the screen, what really is interesting about the project? What do you want to see um, get better? What needs more attention? Uh, anyone? Uh, you, sir. OK, we got that. Speeding up Q-spray deployment. We'll definitely so cool. cover so that. this That's is one, one topic. Other topic you would like to discuss? Yeah. It's very important. So, so maybe we can go through uh, them. So first is continuous integration, meaning yeah. how we can maybe improve um, the, the coverage. Uh, do we test? Is it like for the experience? Do you think it's stable enough? Or do we have like a lot of error when we try to deploy? How we can improve uh, this? Uh, other one is yeah contribution to Kubespray. So how we could uh, improve the experience? Did you have trouble when you feel an issue to have um, I don't know, uh, it solved, or if you have a PR, etc. What we can make it uh, better? Long term support. If you want to. Um, yeah. So well, everyone who wants to deploy Kubespray is excited to deploy right from master, 
And what happens after that? Do you want to stay on that same version forever? Do you want to fork? Uh, do you want to go to the next tag release, to the next stable release, or do you want to be a uh, commando and go on master and see where it lands? Um, everyone has their own opinions, um, and so we just want to talk about that some more. Next, I say to speed is: Is it a matter for you? Like, the, is it the deployment fast enough, uh, or it's not a, a big deal? And or we could maybe improve if anyone of you have ideas about direction we could try uh, to improve the speed of deployment say, from zero to get the cluster API ready. And last, it's about how you're using Kubespray in your own infrastructure. So some, uh, we've seen a lot of projects wrapping Kubespray, say I have my uh, provisioning and script and including Kubespray. Um, is, it, is what is upstream easy enough right now or do you need to write script on top and if everyone needs to write script, maybe is there something missing uh, upstream? So this is uh, engaging the discussion around that uh, to know what you're doing. All right. By a show of hands, who wants to hear more about the, the testing of Kubespray? OK, a few. Um, contrib uh, contributor experience in Kubespray. Show of hands, just a few. Long-term support, about the same. Uh, speeding up, everyone. Me too. I should raise my hand. Um, and then uh, wrapping Kubespray with your own uh, deployment tools. Yeah, everyone. Okay, That's cool. So let's go for this too. And yeah, let's go right to speeding it up. Is it too slow? Um, what's the fastest time you've seen Kubespray deploy in? OK, I've seen five. With, with three nodes. No, one node. One, no. one node. <laughs> It's awesome. No, but really everyone needs like 10 nodes. Yeah, and 30 is a good number. 30 is a good number to land at. Some people think it should be 10. Um, I don't know. I wish that we got to 10 everywhere. I can do 11 with three nodes. Um, is there a size of the cluster you feel like more pain? Or is it like small cluster is okay and when you, you scale it's like uh, too much time? What's the ratio of it? Like, is it like a particular pattern? I've done my best with tags, I'll be honest. So, so yeah, the, the question is like, if something goes wrong, oh, uh, we have to do it all over again. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can talk about tags first. Tags, it's a feature of Ansible. You have to label your roles or your tasks directly or the task file, and you can set a tag, and um, everything is broken down into like, pre-install, no, bootstrap OS, pre-install, container engine, download, Kubernetes node, master, kubeadm join for nodes, network plugin, and then apps, which is a big umbrella. I, one of those apps is Helm that I included in the slide. Um, and so you can actually limit tags to those, and it should be working uh, in the last couple of releases for sure. Um, so if your QB and init failed, yeah, you should be able to just do minus minus tags equals master and try it again. Um, uh, and that can be useful for those people who want to rerun without running all the download roles. Um, you can also use skip tags. One, one idea also was to split a little bit the, um, as you say, uh, a lot of time you have to redeploy all, all the things, so try to think about Kubespray in steps. So maybe if you're familiar, the first is to prepare the operating system, so install the container engine and all the system package required, I'll say Python, for example. So maybe we can have something that stops here, and you know it's done when you host, and if you work on VM, you can freeze this image, and now the next time will be all ready, and you can always skip these parts if you prepare your VM. And the, the next thing will be ATCD. We don't need to deploy ATCD or try to check ATCD all the time. Uh, so it could be you deploy ATCD for good, and then you go back to ATCD whenever you want an upgrade without thinking about Kubernetes and so on. So that could be an idea also to uh, speed up to find chunk of uh, deployments. Um, 
Um, another option that I've used in several Cubespray projects or implementations is um, run Ansible on a virtual machine and then pack it down into like Amazon AMI or a, a KVM VM image. Um, just pre-run like the Docker install, uh, uh, installing um, all the pulling all the containers uh, and binaries necessary, um, and, and that makes a big difference as well. Um, that's only going to make sense if you're just deploying over and over and over because something's wrong with you or because you really like testing. Um, so it, it's really a big deal um, when you when you do want to do lots and lots and lots of small clusters is prepare an image ahead of time uh, and keep it updated because um, half the deployment is downloading and the, files. Uh, and the control machine also is very important for the speed. So if you deploy from your laptop or um, from a small machine, it will take a lot of time because it can, uh, it can easily uh, fork uh, the deployment. And uh, if you have like a bigger host, it would be much more faster to deploy on all your nodes. And put your node very close, or even one of the actual Kubernetes nodes you could run Ansible from, um, and it works great. Um, yeah, and latency, of course, I mentioned that. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this is more of a large-scale deployment issue. If you're uh, a situation, if you're deploying more than 20 nodes, it's actually faster to run two separate Ansible runs, first with the masters and SED nodes, and then again with just the cube nodes. And you can see the amazing uh, uh, groups reference to exclude masters and NCDs. Um, uh, and at scale of 500 nodes, uh, this is a matter of two hours uh, deployment difference, uh, three hours versus five hours. Okay, and we try to experiment with Mitogen. Anyone is familiar with Mitogen or try the deployment? So it's a different strategy. In Ansible, you can choose different strategies. Say, uh, I want all the hours to go as fast as possible without waiting for the other, etc. And Mitigen is a new plugin as a different strategy. And we've been like saying um, there is some downside, like it's not 100% compatible yet, but we're seeing like three times uh, faster in the Ansible um, just script itself. So. It will really, we experiment, we try to migrate to it, uh, and it will be very m much faster if we succeed. So if you're interesting also, if you know Metogen, interesting to contribute to try uh, to migrate uh, to Metogen, it will uh, clearly boost the performance uh, a lot. Uh, does anyone know about Metogen project? A good number. So it, what it does is it tries to move the processing away from the deploy node into the target nodes, and so they kind of have a little more authority and they run through the playbook faster. Um, uh, but it's still very experimental, so I'd be nervous about putting it in production. But some people are giving it a, guy, a go and having success. Um, previous versions had problems with the delegate to option. Uh, sometimes you need to talk to one of the masters to get information and then give it back to the node uh, or run a command on behalf of the node. And now that works. And I think the last one of the efforts also we're trying to reduce, if you see Kubespray is with like 600 or task, and we try to reduce this using QADM, HDM, like a lot of things we've been doing manually. We're now trying to use, uh, in collaboration with Seek Cluster Lifecycle, the tooling there. So now it's like one command, QADM, and we go on with ATCD as um, also. So we'll reduce the number of tasks and the ping pong between all the nodes to check the, the status. Um, yes, yeah, so with Kubernetes 1.14, they've uh, increased the experimental control plane mode. Uh, you no longer have to uh, manually copy certificates from the first master to the other masters. It can be, uh, it's done now with an encrypted secret in Kubernetes, and you set a key, and the nodes will join uh, to the Kubernetes cluster uh, without needing Ansible to put the certs there. So that's one step that um, is very slow and Ansible when you have to list through a whole bunch of files and move them around. Um, I'd prefer if, you, if it wasn't necessary, just one command, you have a cluster up, but we still need to do a lot of these very manual tasks uh, in our other areas. Um, the next big area to get improvements is when Kubernetes uh, can do a really production-ready SD cluster. Uh, with HA, with the ability to scale, downscale, and so on. Um, but expect that in a few weeks. 
um, some experimental mode with that. Anyone want to talk some more about speeding up Kubespay deployment? Any uh, personal stories or uh, comments, questions on that? Like, okay. yeah, so maybe we can move on to the uh, wrapping yeah. thing? Nope. Yeah, this one. Nope, okay. that one. Um, the most common situation I see people use is the first one. They run three Ansible uh, commands, like whatever's my pre-install, which could be provision VMs or um, requisition hardware, wait for IT to, provision, to deploy it, and then uh, you can deploy Kubernetes. Um, or maybe you need to do some disk work, like partitioning, uh, or set up NTP, so some other things that Kubespray doesn't handle. Uh, and then you actually run the Kubespray playbook, the cluster YAML, and then run whatever after. And that's usually um, connecting you know, external authentication, Helm charts, um, security policies, and so on. Everything that goes on to a ready Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so you can do it in three playbooks, or you can make one playbook that just includes all of these three. Um, and then you're only running Ansible once, uh, and you usually do save time doing that. Uh, how you make that work in your project is you make an Ansible, a Git repo, make an Ansible playbook, um, and then you add an Ansible config file that has a roles path pointing to your Kubespray uh, Git repo that's checked out in another directory. Does anyone want to share how they're using Kubespray if it's wrapping to um, all those parts? Yeah, go ahead. I'll give him a microphone. You go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for the great tool. Uh, we started using KubeSpray a couple months ago. Um, uh, so we first running off the master branch. So then slowly we start thinking about we need to patch something. Bef well, it's, we, we're submitting the patch upstream as well, but we just want to use it before it gets accepted. So we start thinking about the model, how we, can, how we can reliably reproduce our deployment results. So we started packaging uh, KubeSpray into a Docker container, um, yeah, and, and version it. So our process is we build a container of the certain version of KubeSpray, we deploy it, and we build a new one. Then our test procedure can be use the old container to build a cluster, and then use the new one to upgrade it to see how the process is. And, it works out pretty well. Yeah, that's a good option. How are you using the container? You deploy the container on the host and run. Okay, so it's like a, a cube spray package in, in the container. Yeah. There we go. This is just for your information, but uh, I'm using the Kubespray uh, via uh, DeepOps that is uh, written by the NVIDIA that's open source. So uh, our purpose of the Kubespray is uh, make a Kubernetes cluster with GPU machines. So I, I doing the uh, DeepOps uh, uh, for Kubespray into it. Uh, installation and DevOps has some script, bash, I think, bash uh, shell script to uh, deploy the Azure playbook for the Kubespray. Is, uh, is there like difficulty to integrate Kubespray in uh, like following the upstream and integrate Kubespray to sub projects, say, uh, deep, like DevOps, or it's, it's quite easy to just have the, to always fetch upstream in your sub project? No, no difficulty at all. I mean, on the Ansible part, it means you include the role, I think, and you just uh, tr chain trigger. Okay. So what should we do? Should we go to some other topics? Any, any idea how we could, should we write, this, like, any idea of how we could improve it um, upstream? Should we write um, more script provisioning um, do you think it would be interesting to provision the machine itself, like on AWS, or we should stop at just Kubernetes installation? Yeah, the, the scope of Kubespray was always, we don't provision your VMs. Everyone can provision a VM, 
and there's a thousand ways to do it with a thousand different tools. So if we picked one method, we'll make everyone else unhappy except for the one person who likes that method. Um, uh, I don't like playing that game of guessing, you know, being smarter than the deployer. Let's let them provision how they want. But should that actually change in the project? Should we pick a really official way to provision VMs? Well, apparently the community tries to converge to, uh, around this cluster API thing. How do you, how do you see Cupspray working with it? Um, I can say actually, uh, Marantis is working on a project that uses cluster API uh, to provision, uh, for example, on OpenStack and AWS uh, and bare metal um, soon. And, that we, and then with cluster API, we'll call Ansible. Um, so yes, that's, that's definitely an option. Um, and it is also an, an opinionated way to make VMs, but it's written in a way that you can write a plugin for whatever you want. So yes, uh, as the project moves to beta, maybe it should be adopted by more projects. But since anything we write now is going to change dramatically, adopting cluster API for production might not be a good idea until it's really ready. But they do need input from people, for sure. OK. So I think we can just go to any kind of question uh, from the audience, if you have. Uh, yep, go ahead. Uh, hi. So I was wondering if you've considered um, putting more attention towards um, disaster recovery tools coming with Cubespray. So I've, I've been working recently. I've, I've had some luck sort of leveraging your um, certificate deployment stuff to be able to like reuse a CA so as to avoid invalidating all my X509 certs. Um, I found it sort of trickier to work in anything to like in a Cubespray compatible way, like restore an etcd snapshot and rebuild from scratch. But, but you know, knowing that you've got you know, working CA and set of certificates and etcd snapshot, it'd be nice to be able to rebuild. I mean, I did notice the um, You've just merged some stuff to sort of rebuild and recover etcd control planes, which is cool and interesting. But yeah, have you given much thought to that? Um, I, have, I didn't actually write the recovery, but I did write a really extensive article on how to do it by hand. Yeah. Uh, you can Google my name in etcd, and you'll see this really massive script on how to recover etcd. But actually, someone put it in a playbook uh, in Cubespray for recovering. Um, the one thing that Cubespray does is before every time you run the etcd role, it does make a snapshot just hey, there's another snapshot just right before we broke your cluster. Hopefully not. But I think it's part of the project to uh, deal with such use case. And so I think currently we don't have, but we will probably accept uh, PR on say, this is my snapshot, recreate the cluster from this snapshot, for example. Question? I haven't checked recently, but what is the status uh, of cloud, deploying Cloud Controller Manager and uh, like setting Cloud Provider external uh, because OpenStack people want to move uh, to that uh, solution as well? All right. Um, that's something that is still an open topic. We do, you can set Cloud Provider as external, but we don't have any prov provide, we have Oracle Cloud external provider um, in tree. Cubespray, but not any other external providers. Not that, that we'd be opposed to it. You could contribute one for sure. Um, cloud providers are quite valuable. Thanks, Antoine. Uh, so we have an air gap uh, situation on our company. Um, uh, do you cater uh, this with uh, upcoming? Uh, versions a, a bit more, like um, having special tasks to uh, well, fetch uh, all images you need or yeah, b b binaries, because now it's uh, really well, cumbersome to, to get all the uh, predefined uh, image versions which, which you are pulling um, uh, to get it uh, well, on premise in, in, your, uh, in, in our uh, uh, own network. So is there something coming up or? Wait, are you asking how do I set up a local registry to pull all my images from? Um, no, but um, like um, you define your the, the images and tags uh, in, in, your, in your files. And I don't want to search for it every time. So like uh, I want to have a task which, which I can run to have all my, to have all the I images which, are, which I have to have. 
Okay, I can talk about that. So yes, we do have the, the role download, which has the defaults variable. Uh, replace the word node with the uh, Kubernetes node with download, and you'll see uh, there's a very long YAML with um, like etcd image repo, core DNS image repo, um, and we point to official Docker Hub or Quay or some other repo. Uh, and you can actually just in your own uh, deployment override this. Uh, in a group var, an external var, however you want. Um, and you don't have to pull from the official source. If, you, if your environment is air-gapped, you can uh, point to your own local registry that has these images already. Uh, the same with the binaries as well. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. I like the compiled list uh, of all uh, artifacts which you are using beforehand. Um, we try to keep the list on the readme. Uh, and the list in the release notes. I think you can use download only, and so you could download everything and then package uh, on your local reg registry. So that's, you will always run download only, get all the uh, um, artifacts, and then you can store them and reuse this. Uh, that could be something we could add as a separate playbook just to list what the images would be pulled, so you could make your own registry uh, without parsing YAML. Um, any other questions from the audience? Anything else we could be talking about that would be really uh, useful uh, to making your deployments more successful? Uh, in the back, let's go in the back. Sorry, Antoine. Yeah. Um. Is there a way to do immutable deployments using kubespray to avoid like configuration drift between multiple Ansible deployments? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Is there a way to uh, do immutable deployments, like deploying images of, of built course. using kubespray, which bootstraps itself automatically when, like, uh, for example, if I add a node, if I just scale and say ASG, and it should, the node should come up and auto-register itself with the cube master. So basically building AMIs which can bootstrap itself on. An image? Yeah. You have to build one yourself. There, I believe we have one in the contrib directory. Some tooling uh, on that? We have Packer scripts in the contrib directory of kubespray if you want to build an image uh -huh. that has images pre-downloaded. Yeah. OK, got that. Yeah. Not the actual image, but scripts that you can use HashiCorp Packer with. Uh, we had another question in the middle. That's OK. OK. Okay, let me try to repeat the question first. Um, this gentleman wants to create uh, an image that's, that's supplied with user data from AWS to be able to provision that, that, that one VM by itself. Um, it currently, in a really nice secure way, I can't suggest, but if you had the SSH key to all the masters, yes, you can. Um, and you could provision an additional VM from that node using Ansible, but it still needs to talk to the masters with Ansible. Um, if we solve the etcd problem uh, in the next few weeks, there should be a way to do self-join uh, of control plane and nodes. Yeah, that's, that's one of the biggest things in the, I say, in the roadmap is to able to spawn a node and uh, it can join the cluster and provision itself. So we can prepare, say, a kubespray container with everything inside and it's not like have to be orchestrated in form uh, an Ansible host. It will just, so now you can add an autoscaler group. Uh, there is a new node. It will know how to join uh, the cluster itself. So that's a work in progress. And yeah, we 
probably going to base more on HCDs and AWS uh, data. And so you still need to point to the HCD and something, but we, we think about that. Um, and you, we still, if you're using Weave or, no, we, Calico or Flannel or Canal, uh, you, we, you do need to be able to generate a certificate in NCD. Uh, if you didn't need NCD, if you're using Weave or some of the other providers, you, you can just do kubeadm join and have a predefined join token. That would work uh, and meet your needs, um, but we're not quite yet, there yet. Uh, but I would like to be. And as an alternative, so right now we can just hook to, say, uh, Ansible Tor or something, an API to re-trigger the, and automatically the deployment just for this node uh, without, so using current spray, but using a web hook to uh, redeploy automatically to the new node. That's uh, an alternative also. Okay, I think. Um, last call, any other topics we want to talk about? Is your hand up? Okay. Are you, sh you can take it back. Okay. I was just curious if you'd look into utilizing operators in what KubeSpray is doing. Um, that sounds more like a cluster API type approach where you would have some KubeSpray operator to provision other clusters, but you need an existing Kubernetes cluster to provision. So I, I don't know if that would meet our needs. You mean operator as an application to deploy, or? Yeah, well, I was about also the day two. Once you've launched something with KubeSpray, how are you then updating it and managing it? So there is a new working group uh, for uh, cluster add-on. Uh, if you want to join this uh, working group, it's every Tuesday. And it is th exactly this, is how right now we deploy our own uh, core DNS, our own uh, metric server, et cetera, uh, and Ansible. And we want, across the cluster lifecycle, I want to um, work together to have the same method, say KOps or KubeADM, deploy exactly the same. So working on one operator where you can choose, with, everyone would use this same operator, uh, and you can choose which add-on you want to, uh, to enable. So that's. Um, a working, we still need to wait for this uh, bundle operator upstream to go out, and we will probably use it uh, later. Mm -hmm. um, but on the topic of actually managing Kubernetes cluster within that same cluster, I'd be quite hesitant. I don't want to take down my uh, upgrade my etcd, and then well, if something goes wrong, I can't get to my operator, and I can't continue the the, the deploy because everything's down. I, I'd be hesitant. Um, and okay. yeah, like KubeADM doesn't even use a hosted mode uh, at this point um, for similar concerns. Uh, you just go to how to find us. Yeah. Um, so we're at the end of the talk. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, you can find us, QSpray.io. Uh, our GitHub repo, and there's a ton of us on KubeSpray Slack. Um, uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks.